God. Oh, I don't even know who this is for, but I'm sure somebody not here tonight. So let's take the notes for them, okay? I'm sure nobody's in this place tonight that your world has fallen apart. Turned upside down, death, divorce, uh, bankruptcy, addictions, uh, depression. Just, just go through the gamut of things that we are sitting here wrestling with. And I, I, I told today the sub at recovery down in the probation office, I said, you know something? I think sometimes as church Christians, we're just sometimes the biggest liars. We come into a service like this tonight and we want to tell everybody, I'm okay. I have no problem. Marriage is on the rocks. You don't know if you're going to be able to make the ends meet. You come up here and you're, you're finding yourself in a situation. You're depressed. Your kids are on drugs. And, and then we, we, we want to come in and just be so happy. If we can just be honest with ourselves and with God, God can begin to heal us. This, should, this is a safe place. It ought to be a safe place. Now, I've been in some churches, it's not a safe place. They want to talk about you, but this ain't one of them. I'm just glad that you're here tonight. I don't care, again, as you know, I don't care if you're red, yellow, black, or white, tatted to the mix, mix tatted to the max, or pierced up. It don't matter what you have on and what you don't have on, because God loves you, and you are loved tonight. We're not a perfect church. I wish we were. I wish we had a perfect pastor, but I'm not. But what we are is a bunch of broken people that God's put back together again. And that he's working in our lives. He's not finished with any of us yet. So therefore, if I know that I'm still broken, then I don't, I don't have to, I don't sit here and condemn you, think that I got all my junk together. We're learning together. We're growing together in Jesus Christ. Amen? Let me hit this quickly tonight because I think this word will penetrate in some of our lives and hopefully just encourage you to not give up. When Jesus said, well, I find faith on this earth when I get back. Well, I find faith. Now, we can take that many different ways, but the thing I want to kind of highlight is, you know, when he comes back, what is he going to find? You know, I've been trying to give you some of the basic teachings because I think a lot of Christians have come through church and we forgot about Jesus. We just, we've been more interested in buying our cars or how big our houses are and how, tell me how blessed I'm going to be. Listen, I don't know. We can't, we can't buy him. All right, that's what I'm afraid. We, we pot, pot, put God into a box like a genie. Tell me about my ego. Tell me how good I'm going to be. Listen, God wants to work in your life tonight. And if your world's felt like it's falling apart, you're at a safe place. People are going to minister to you here in just a few minutes. And I want to share six quick things with you that's going to Lamentations chapter 3. And I'm going to talk to you tonight. First thing we have to do, because I know maybe some of us tonight are feeling frustrated. And so it's okay to unload all your frustrations on God. <laughs> it's okay. He's big enough to take it. You see, well, I'm afraid to talk to him like that. Listen to what the Lamentations, Jeremiah was talking here, Lamentations chapter 3. This is uh, verses 1 through 10. I'm a man who has seen affliction. By the rod of his wrath, he has driven me away and made me walk in darkness rather than light. He has turned his hand against me again and again, all day long. He has made my skin grow old and my bone, broken my bones. He has surrounded me with bitterness and hardship. He has made me dwell in darkness like the, like the dead. He has walled me in so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains. Even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayers. He has barred me way, my way with blocks of stone. And he has made my paths crooked. Now, some of you can identify with that because you have felt the same thing, that somehow God is against you. And, I'm and I know many of us have prayed that. I don't understand what I do. And I know, and I, and I grew up in church, and the first thing, I, every, I, first thing that scared, scared me was that I, back, that I, that I um, got in there and blasphemed. I blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Everybody said, don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You know what? I found out I didn't know what blaspheming the Holy Ghost is. But I did it. 
And that's how the enemy hit me. And that's how I felt many times, and I'm sure maybe some of you can identify with that. That seems like your prayers are hitting the ceiling. Where are you now, God? If you're such a good God, we talk about the God of David, the God of Moses, God of Mary. Where are you now, God? You see, the problem is that we can unload that frustration on God because that's what we have to get out before we can face some of the things that he wants to bring change into our lives. We have to come to that place of emptying ourselves and being honest, not only with God, but with yourself. One of the biggest things we found in recovery, one of the biggest things is denial. Denial. I don't want to face it. I don't have a problem. And that's the problem. Many of us tonight, the enemy eats us because we cannot and we don't want to share anything. The Bible says in James chapter 5, it says, confess your faults one to another and do something else and pray one for another. And then he says, the answer to this question is, so that you may be healed. Many of us tonight are carrying burdens that are not ours. And the problem is you're, you're not taking them to the Lord. You're talking to the Lord about them and throwing them on him and blaming him for all your problems. Look at what you've done to me, okay? Do you understand that we all have something that everybody in our lives has, and that's called a free choice, free wills? Many times God has put roadblocks, signs, do not go here, do not do this, do not do that, and then we want to blame God and say, why have you done this to me? You have burned me from heaven. You have made my bones broken. Oh, if I... We've got to unload that. Begin to take that burden and not blaming him for everything. I've never gone to a funeral, that, especially a drug addict, I've never gone to a funeral that I've ever heard this at the casket. I'm going to stop living for the devil. This is what he does. You see, the Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus then says, but I have come to give you life worth living more abundantly. Can I get a hallelujah about that? You see, how many of us are blaming God for, uh, look at what he did. No, the Bible says in James that God is a good God, and he gives good gifts to his children. Why don't we sit there and blame the devil? I'm never going to smoke weed again. If this is what he does to people and take pills, I'm never going to do that again. This is his MO. That is his fingerprint. But most of the people stand there and blame God for this. God did You could have changed it. How many road signs have you, have you walked through? In your pain, turn your focus from your pain to God's love. <laughs> Lamentations 3, 19, 26. The thought of my pain and my homelessness is bitter poison. I think of it constantly and my spirit is depressed. Now, that's where many of us live. The good news is there's another story of this because it said here, my hope returns when I remember this one thing. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continues fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise. The Lord is all I have, so in Him I will put my hope. Hallelujah. You've got to turn your attention on back on God's love. You can sit here and be depressed all day long, but the world's upside down. I heard a preacher said years ago that his grandfather had one of these nasty little beards and the mustaches. He said the, kid, the grandkids were going to play a trick on him. So what he did, I've never smelled it, but they said it's nasty smelling, and that is Limburger cheese. Never. Well, the problem was they put some Limburger cheese on Grandpa's mustache. Grandpa choked. He's like, wow. He said, man, this room stinks. So he went into the kitchen to see if it was in there, and he started smelling. He said, man, this kitchen stinks. He went into the living room. This living room stinks. Then he walked down on the front porch and took a whiff. Maybe it was not. He took a whiff, and he smelled it again. And he looked, and he says, man, this whole world stinks. It was under his nose all along. You need to be healed. You need to be delivered. That's hard, I know, because it's easy to blame somebody else for my problems. Let God begin to restore you and heal you. Lamentations 3, 31 and 33. The Lord is merciful and will not reject us forever. He may show us sorrow, bring us sorrow, 
but His love for us is sure and strong. He takes no pleasure in causing us grief or pain. You got some Job's friends around you. You need people going somewhere. I, always, I, I was telling the Celebrate Recovery this morning, I said, I always like to hang with people going where I want to be, not where I've been. I know what it takes to get back there. I want to go I want this way. Hold on tonight because this is, a, this is a next step forward. Hold on. And when you're in your pain, instead of giving up and want to quit and want to quit church and get, isolate yourself because I feel I'm hurting, get up and shake off that spirit of heaviness. Break it right now through your garments of praise. Put them on whether you feel like it or not. And sometimes it will be a sacrifice because you're not going to feel nothing and you're going to have to praise him in the middle of your storm and you're going to have to rejoice but remind yourself why you're rejoicing because God is in love with me and I'm in love with him hallelujah and he's never left me nor has he forsaken me glory to God my father help us the body needs to hear this we're broken we're we're hurting don't you know about the economy? But don't you know, I don't care what it looks like, my God is still my provider. He is still, because I know him, because I've not just been in his little presence and had a little good little service. I've been back there and I've seen him, and I know his voice, and I know that he is my healer, my deliverer, my sanctifier. He is my peace, hallelujah. He is my provider, and he is my healer. I know him as that. I'm hoping. Ain't no hope to it. I know that he is. What if you die, Pastor Steve? Just put guava dip in my belly button because I'm not there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't care. Pastor, this is just my tent because Paul said it to be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. Rejoice with me. Come on, church. We think somehow that's a curse because he, he's provided us a place. <sighs> Three, look at this. And I'm not saying go out and stand in front of a log truck tonight. Please don't. You got to be specific tonight because people are going cray cray. They have lost their mind minds. All right. I'm telling you, you live your life according to what God's word says. Look. The third thing that will help us in our world has fallen apart, the third thing I exhort us to do is get alone with God and wait. Yes, it is. But if you look, if you look in um, Psalms 27, man, this is an amazing chapter. Here's what it says. I would have given up unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. They that wait upon the Lord. That is the same word as Isaiah 40. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When I looked that up in the Hebrew, it, it threw me for a loop. Let me show it to you. Come here, mad hand, that you got your new Porsche. <laughs> Come up here, Bubba. <sighs> All right. They that wait, I would have given up unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There's two words in that 27. It says wait. Same word in the Hebrew. Same word as Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It talks they that wait upon the Lord. Here's what it says in the Hebrew. Ready? To be twisted. Come on, baby. Don't you do that, man. <laughs> My sanctified imagination goes off the chart. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. It speaks of this. It means I'm taking a leather strap and I am twisting it. That's what makes weight is not doing nothing. It is active. See, we think weight is laziness. Wait is you're doing something. What you're doing is you are wrapping yourself around the word of the Lord and look at what happens when I am weak. I have his strength. When I go through it, I have him with me. You see what I'm saying? 
So they that wait means to wrap ourselves around it. And what happens is I, in my weakness, I now gain his strength. They that twist themselves around the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I would have given up unless I wrapped myself around me. I would have given up unless I wrapped myself around the Lord. And because I did that, I will not faint because he is with me. Amen. Amen. Boom. Amen or oh me. <laughs> Lamentations 3.25. Bethany, would you come back, please? The Lord is good to everyone who trusts him. So it is best for us to wait. To wait for him to do what? See, this is the problem like in a service like we just had, you know, with the power of God and the, the presence. We are taught we've got to do something. We've got to make it happen. We've got to keep it going. Mm -mm. Just relax. Like a stream, catch the wave and flow with him. You see, we want to make things happen because that's what we're used to. Because, you know, here, don't forget, we come through the gates of praise. Then we come to this altar and we confess our sins and we hear a message. We confess our sins and then we go out. We, we've missed his presence. We missed his glory. We missed what Moses says. And God told Moses in Exodus 33, he says, Moses says, let me see your glory. Then, he, then God gives a revelation that many of us stumble over because here's what he said. No man shall see my face and to live to tell about it. All right? Now look at what happens. Your glory and his face, his glory, his face are interchangeable there. But he gives, you a, he gives you the clue to go back behind that curtain. Only dead men will see me. I'm not impressed with your stuff. I'm not impressed with your entertaining. I'm not impressed with that at all. I am impressed with maybe just a, I saw this little girl up here. She's getting baptized Sunday, right? You, she, I'm so excited because I'm going to hold you in a long time. Is it okay? No, no. I saw her up here worshiping. Nobody, nobody entered. Nobody was looking at her. I looked down and I saw her hands raised. That's a childlike faith. It's not mama's faith. It's my faith now. And that's what we've missed. We've become entertainers and it's more than worshipers. We gotta have the right song. We gotta have the right lights. What if we cut all the lights off tonight and just have these stage lights? Could you still worship? What if Bethany's not up here and I get the spoons out? Could you still worship? Why? Because it has nothing to do with that, these, or any of that. It has everything to do with his presence. Four, change the things I can change. <laughs> there are some things out of your control got to face it. You're going to have to put it in the hands of God. There's some things out of your control. Just out of your, out of your control. Lamentations 3.40 it says there, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Change. Ask God to relieve my fears. You see, we are okay with waiting, we're okay with coming before him, asking for change. But now our fears kick in. Why? Lamentations 3, 50, uh, 53, 57, through 57. My enemies threw me into a pit and dropped, me, <laughs> dropped stones on me. The water flowed above my head and I cried out, This is the end. How many times you heard this word, but God? <laughs> but God. But God. I called on your name, the Lord, from the depths within the well. 
and you heard me. Listening to my pleading, you heard my weeping. When everybody else put a curse on me and says, you're never going to be used again because you made a mistake, you blew it. Now you're marked for the rest of your life. And I'm so thankful to God that that is not the case. Men will throw you out, but God never did. Come on, church. Amen or oh me? Yes. You came at my despairing cry and told me, don't you fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. But I'm drowning. I'm here with you. See, my life, my lifeguard walks on water. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you got to see it. But, Lord, they are saying things about me on Facebook. Pastor, they, they ridiculed me. They made fun of me. They asked me to go. They had all these different things that they told me to do, and here I am. But the Lord is saying tonight to those, those who are watching by Facebook, those who are here tonight, listen, do not fear. He heard your desperation and cry, and he wants to begin to bring change. And the thing is, you're, he's going to begin to work on you because that's the only one that right now that we can change. I can't change her. I can't change him. I can't change them. Change me, Lord. Expect Jesus to restore my life. Lamentations 521, restore us, O oh Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joy we once had without trying to fake it through church service. Restore to us the joy. David was busted. David was busted, man. I mean, David was busted. That's one time you never want to hear somebody say, you're the man. Because that's what Nathan told him when he said, there was a shepherd who had many sheep, and there's one over here who just had one sheep. David was a shepherd still at heart. He looked and said, boy, I would have, ooh, I would have, oh, I, ooh, I'd have, I'd have find, I would go after that one guy. Nathan the prophet looked at him and says, you are the man. You're the one. This is the Psalms that David wrote in his repentance. Psalms, this, this is only part of these things. Is, I mean, you got so much wealth of, of information. You could hear a man's heart crying out to God. But listen to what he pleaded for in Psalms 51, verses 10 through 11, 12. He says, create in me a what? Oh, God. Well, look, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Then he realized something. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. There's my source. There's my strength. The board can tell me all the day they want to. They can say what they want to about me on Facebook, the Internet, and all the other friends can gossip about me at church. But Lord, don't you dare take your Holy Spirit from me. I don't care what they say. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Wow. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Because without you, I am an empty shell. And we in church know how to fake our way through services and worship and ministry. We become hired guns. We know how to smile when we're dying on the inside. When our world is turned upside down. Take not the Holy Spirit from me, God. I can lose everything else but not you. What a cry. I have failed you. And then he goes on down in that chapter 51 and he looks and he says that I may be able in essence go back and teach others your righteousness and your holiness. The mercy you've given me, 
is the mercy seat. I've got champions in this room tonight. That you've been there, done that, got a t-shirt for it. You know what it means to be in jail. You know what it means to be almost dead. You know, some of you even know what it means to die. You know what it means, the, the pain of rumors. You know what it means to feel the pain of death. You know what it means. You know what it means. What is sustaining you is not just a nice smile, but you've learned a secret that if, even though my world is turned upside down, I will trust you. Lamentations 3.22, I love this scripture. Your mercies are new every day. Great is your faithfulness. You woke up this morning and good news is, good news is, is you woke up with a new dose of mercy, something you didn't deserve, but yet God gave it to you. And it says that what he tells us that, listen, the good news is concerning time. We look and we say, oh, great, you know, look what time it is. He says what he tells us there about the revelation. He tells us that, that we look at that revelation, that, that good news of Jesus Christ, the revelation of who he is, though you wept through the night joy comes in the morning Amen. hallelujah and I don't believe it has anything to do with the wristwatch it has everything to do with revelation don't worry about it I'm gonna no do not call emergency I'm okay <laughs> I did not fall sorry my bad Remind me never hit that again tonight. <sighs> Restore to me a joy of your salvation. Revelation of who you are. Joy comes in the morning. It has nothing to do with this. It has everything to do with this. Holy Spirit, tonight move in this audience, those who are watching by Facebook. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. I hope you can join us Sunday morning as we continue 10C. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you for joining us tonight. We love you and appreciate you. Thank you. We're honored you're here. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The worlds in this room maybe have been turned upside down. Would you do something I can't do? Would you go and touch their hearts? Would you comfort them and let them know that it's going to be okay? Even though you feel like you're drowning, even though you feel like there's no more hope for you, tonight there is hope. Wrap yourselves around the Lord. Across this room tonight, we're not here to judge anybody or put anybody down. But there's people in this room tonight, this word just went right into your spirit was a, a breath of fresh air. It's a word that you've been longing for because you've been up against it. And some of it's not anything you've done. But tonight, God wants to wrap his arms around you. We're going to, I call this body ministry. So that we as a body can love on one another and encourage and pray one for another. If you're just needing prayer, we're not here to embarrass you. This is not a judgment call. This is not a anything other than what I just said. We want to pray for you. I have been in exactly the same place as you are. And I've had people love on me and pray for me. I didn't think I was going to make it through the night. But God. But God. If that's you tonight, just stand. Nobody's going to embarrass you, but just stand. I need prayer tonight. I'm just stand right up. We're not going to embarrass you, but we're going to pray for you. Any others tonight before we pray? Can I ask you to look around the room here tonight? Some of our guys and some of our sisters tonight, I want you to get out of your seats and just, just pray. Let them know. If they want to tell you what it is, that's their business. If they don't, just come into agreement with them and pray for them. Some of these sisters over here, some of our guys over here, uh, again, you are just as anointed as Benny Hinn. You're just as anointed as Pastor Steve. You're it's no different. You are, have the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Just let the Holy Spirit minister through you tonight, would you? Just come on, Nika. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on, just pray. Thank you, Janet. 